Good morning. As we're starting, I'd like you to listen or watch this short video of Luke 24 and open your Bibles to Luke 24, 1 through 12. In the dim light of dawn, the city of Jerusalem lay shrouded in silence, its streets bearing the weight of the recent events just days before. Just beyond the city walls, in a garden tomb, lay the body of Jesus, wrapped in linen. And the hopes and dreams of his followers are entombed there with him. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, hearts heavy with grief, make their way to the tomb. As they approach, they discuss the heavy stone sealing its entrance. They wonder how they might enter the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. But when they arrive, they discover that the unimaginable has happened. They find the stone rolled away. Fear grips their hearts as they step inside, only to find that the tomb is empty and that the body of Jesus isn't there. Suddenly, two angels of the Lord appear before them, each wearing white. And with the roar of lightning and thunder, they declare, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Those words echo deeply into their souls, dispelling the darkness of grief and despair. For Jesus, the one they've given their hearts and lives to, is indeed alive. Today you're invited to discover the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and to experience the overwhelming gift of grace and salvation that's being offered through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Good morning once again. Jesus is alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, church, and all those watching from afar as well, who is also the church. We are all the body of Christ, all those who trust in Jesus. And today is another important and significant day for our faith. Easter, Resurrection Sunday. This day marks the climax to our faith, and we're going to look to Luke today and see why Easter truly matters. You see, the resurrection is central to our faith. It changes everything. Other religions around the world have graves to visit for those they idolize, those they worship. But Christ, he is not there. He is not dead. He is alive. Yes, Christ, he is risen. He is risen indeed. With your Bibles open to Luke 24, 1 through 12, please follow along with me. Look down to your word of God. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, no. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves, and he went home marveling. At what had happened. Praise the Lord. Wow. What an amazing climax to the life and ministry of Jesus. As I said before, the resurrection of Jesus and the empty tomb of Jesus is central to our faith as Christians. It 
changes everything. The resurrection changes everything. In fact, Paul says that of this, that if Christ was not raised from the dead, the Christian faith, our faith, is vain, and we are still dead in our sins. Vain. It means meaningless, without purpose. Think about that for a moment. Without the resurrection, our God would be powerless. He'd be dead. His message, meaningless. So I have a powerful thought for you. What does this mean for all the false religions around the world that worship such powerless, meaningless people, dead religious leaders? These people of whom they can visit the grave of. Praise the Lord, our God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter changes everything. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. It matters. Today, the church all around the world celebrates its belief in the resurrected Jesus Christ and the transformative power that comes from him being alive and at work in our lives. What looked like defeat to some at that cross, the grave, turned into victory. Jesus overcame sin and death and rose from the grave. So what's so great about Easter? How does the resurrection change everything? The resurrection is a story of victory. Life. Jesus and ours. Everyone loves a good story of victory. A story of triumph and life. One where someone overcomes all odds to rise and survive. One where their great effort, perseverance, seems to immortalize them and ensures that they are remembered. As I say this, I think of sports players like Michael Jordan, Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, or maybe yourself making that game-winning point. I think of a football team coming back and winning in the final quarter. I think of great battles, warriors fighting, never giving up, and winning the war before them. When we experience powerful moments like this, we never forget them. These stories of victory have the power to shape and mold us for the future. Now just think of how Jesus' story molds us for the future. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. Easter changes everything. It is the time of year when we, when we remember the biggest, the greatest, the most pivotal of all time. A moment that changed the world and us forever. On that day, early in the morning, three days after Jesus' crucifixion. Women went to the tomb to deliver spices to the body of Jesus. However, when they arrived, they experienced something that would have been difficult to put into words. The tomb was open. The tomb of Jesus had been sealed by a massive stone rolled across the entrance. But to their surprise, when they arrived, the stone had been rolled away. The tomb, it was empty. And Jesus' body was not to be seen. And let me tell you, the stone was not rolled away for Jesus' is swift, <laughs> swift, as if rolling a giant stone away would ever be swift. But let me tell you, the stone was not rolled away for Jesus' is swift exit. Remember, later we see that his post-resurrected, his glorified body can appear suddenly through locked doors, through walls. The rolled away stone was for us, regular people, the two ladies here, Peter, disciples, to be able to see for themselves, Jesus, Jesus, he is risen. Risen indeed. His words were true. And then they remembered. They remembered all that he had said. Scripture says here, now after they saw for themselves the stone rolled away and Jesus missing, suddenly two angels of the Lord appeared before them in dazzling apparel, it says. As you'd imagine, the women were terrified, perplexed, shocked, in total dismay. Scripture says they were frightened and they bowed to the ground. The angels then told them that Jesus was no longer dead. He was alive and he would not be found in the grave. Hear that today. Jesus is alive. 
Jesus is alive. And hear this, because of this, because of Jesus being alive, because of the resurrected life of Jesus, you can also be alive. You can experience the life of Jesus. Yes, praise the Lord. Let's move on to my first point here. Experiences impact people. Experiences impact people. In fact, some things are better experienced than explained. Experiences are impactful, powerful, and life-changing. Yes, experiences are often better than explanations alone. The women here have a life-changing, radical experience, and they quickly rush off to find the disciples to deliver the good news that Jesus, he had risen from the dead. But how do you tell someone a story like this? How would you possibly get others to imagine, let alone believe, the huge stone rolled away, angels appearing, dazzling in their appearance, bright in an empty tomb where the crucified Savior once was? It would be nearly impossible. No one would believe such a story at this point in time after all they saw the horrific torture and crucifixion. They need the experience themselves. I feel like this is true of Easter some years. How could we possibly experience, explain to our friends such a wonderful, powerful, and life-changing event like the resurrection? We do it, and we should with our words, but it's ex better, excuse me, it is better experienced than explained. We must take them to the word of God to experience for themselves and we must take them to your life to see the radically changed life through the experience of which you have had. Let me give you an illustration. I remember growing up in the church and hearing the story of Easter each year. We may not have been a family that went to church weekly, but I do remember a few holidays. I remember singing about in songs and doing children's crafts depicting the miraculous event. The resurrection, an empty tomb. But all of it seemed more like legend, a story, than truth to me. It was not really until I was in middle school that I began to truly experience Jesus on my own. It was through being part of the skits, part of the songs, part of the serving, and possibly most significantly, part of the relationships I encountered, the power of the living Christ and his word through others. The resurrection was no longer just a story that was told to me but was now a story that I could experience and understand myself. I had met Jesus, and my life was changed. My new life in Christ, it started before youth group when I accepted Christ as Lord. Praise the Lord for my brother Mike. By great experience and understand the risen Christ more each year. More while being in the word and more while being around Jesus and his people. This is similar to what happens after the women leave the tomb. When they tell the story of what they have seen, the disciples just can't believe it. It's like an idle tale. Look down with me at Luke 24, 9 to 12. Luke 24, 9 to 12 says this. Returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna... And Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. So they have numerous people telling them here. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. The Bible says that the words that the women were speaking seemed like nonsense, like an idle tale, a meaningless story. But Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to see for himself. He wanted the experience. How often do we metaphorically run to experience Jesus for ourselves? Every day? Well, we should. When he arrived, he went inside and saw the strips of linen that once covered Jesus' body lying there. And Peter's life would never be the same from that moment. Our lives, running with Christ, are never the same. The resurrection changes everything. The miracle of Easter changes 
everything for him. And it changes everything for us too. Point two is here. The resurrection of changes everything because we encounter the love of God. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything because we encounter the love of God. The reason why it is so important to not just hear the Easter story or engage in it just intellectually, but to truly experience it fully is because Easter brings into focus the incredible love of God for all the world. I have heard it said that if Christmas, Christmas is the promise, Easter is the proof. The proof of what, you may ask? The proof that we are indeed loved by God and that he has gone to great and extraordinary lengths or measures to forgive us of sin and give us new life. New life with Christ. The Apostle Paul, a great missionary for Jesus, writes a prayer to the early church in Ephesus with this in mind. In Ephesians 3, 16 and 19, look with me at the screen. He says... I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, rooted and established in love, we must be rooted and established in love, his love, that then we may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how deep High and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Hear this. God's love for us is so unimaginable, so great, that Paul prays for them to be rooted and experience its fullness for themselves. To grasp it. To experience it. Nothing can truly compare, but possibly we'd understand this experiential power a little bit more. When we think of the life-changing experiences throughout our life of seeing the ocean for the first time, the mountains, and ride on a plane looking out that window. Your child born, taking their first steps, saying dad or mom, or being wed. These experiences change you. They make you feel alive, more like a dad, more like a mom, more blessed as if you're not already blessed in many ways. You see, we had seen these things in movies, pictures, and heard people describe them, but nothing could prepare us but to experience them ourselves. Nothing could capture its beauty. No picture can convey its magnitude. The only way to truly appreciate these grand moments of life is to experience it in person for yourself. Back to Paul now. For Paul, it is not enough for the people in the church of Ephesus to be aware of what the death and resurrection of Christ means for him. He wants them to experience how wide and long and deep the love of Christ is for themselves. To grasp it. And that is my prayer for all of us this morning as well. For my family, for me, for our neighbors, for the world, for you. I pray that we would remember and experience how wide and love, don't long and deep the love of Christ is. I pray that as we remember the rugged cross and the nail-scarred hands and the feet of Jesus that took our sin, as we recall the rolled away stone and empty tomb and our risen Savior Jesus, that offers power over sin and death, that we would be able to sense how amazing Christ's great love, God's great love is for us. I pray that you would experience this and grasp it more fully with each day. We are the reason why he endured all that he did. Eternal salvation or redemption is the joy that was set before him that caused him to offer his life willingly. Look at Hebrews 12, 2 with me. It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Hear this today. 
Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, it changes everything because God's love experienced here has the power to change everything in us. Let me say that again. Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, it changes everything because God's love experienced here has the power to change everything in us. Hear me. The resurrection matters because it shows God's love in action and it changes you. One once said, the true thing about you is that you are loved by God. You are loved by God. With his love being so great for humanity, for you, he loves you just the way you are, yes. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. He knows your shortcomings, your blemishes. He's aware of your mistakes, your sins. And that is the very reason for the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changes us. Motivated by love for his creation, humanity, God sent Jesus to die for you and for me. But now today he's alive. The tomb is empty. And there's hope available to all those who place their faith and trust in him. Here's my final point and challenge for you today. We've talked about this a lot lately. Do others experience Jesus when they experience you? Do others experience Jesus when they experience you? you do they see your hope you see we are meant to be a resurrection people a people group who live and relate to others out of the hope love and joy that we know to be true and to live with the life-changing power through our experience resurrection we are meant to be people who tell this incredible story to others by the way we live our lives may they experience jesus through you Paul writes about this as well in the book of Romans when he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. People, friends, brothers, sisters in Christ, we cannot afford to be timid or embarrassed to let others know by word or deed experience about what Jesus has done. We must speak about the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We must let the world know that this date means something it powerfully means something to us just yesterday i read that president biden has declared this day a day of transgender visibility the day of easter our day we celebrate the risen risen lord jesus and i can't help but take a little bit of responsibility for it because maybe we don't talk enough about how much the resurrection of jesus matters to us It is a matter of life and of death. It is a matter of heaven and hell. It is a matter of hope and despair. So ask yourself, really ask yourself, do people leave my presence with a greater sense that Jesus is alive and that there is resurrection power for them to also live in? Do people experience the love and hope of Jesus when they spend time with you? As one once said, you may be the only Jesus someone ever encounters and the only Bible someone ever reads. The world we live in needs to experience Jesus and his life, death, burial, and resurrection power. And they can and should see this in us. I'll conclude with this thought. The world we live in needs those who have been transformed by the love of God to share this news. The news of Jesus. The news that our Lord Jesus is not dead. I hope this message today and the scripture reminds you today that you need to be more intentional about living for Jesus and sharing him with others. And that we serve a risen Lord Jesus. Maybe today you're reminded to challenge that you need an Easter resurrection experience that would change life forever yourself right now. The truth is this resurrection life is better experienced than explained. The disciples would go to the tomb to see for themselves that Jesus wasn't there. They needed to see the empty tomb with their own lives. This Easter, you too can experience and respond to the empty tomb by placing your faith in the living Christ and receiving the power of the resurrection. Run to Jesus. All it takes is a simple prayer of confession. Confess your wrongdoings, your sin. Repent, turn away from them, and ask the risen Jesus into your life. Experience Jesus, the risen Lord. Today we celebrate the hope we have in Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, 
the power of the resurrection and the reality of the empty tomb. Let this hope renew your minds, change your hearts, and transform your life. Grasp his great love. Remember that unlike other religions of the world, we don't have a dead Savior. Our Savior is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Take time to experience this new life and share this experience with others daily. The resurrection of Jesus Christ matters. It changes everything. It changes us and brings light, hope, and life to the world. Let's pray and close in song. Lord, we thank you for the life of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. We thank you for the empty tomb and that today we can proclaim our Lord is not dead. And because of this, we live with him and with you forever. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Amen.